In 2023, I am undertaking a no buy year. In this video, I'm going to outline the rules that I am setting for myself around that project. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Roisin, it's the Irish version of Rose, so my channel name is Rose Keats. Rose is much easier to spell than Roisin, so that's why that is the case. You won't know if this is your first time here, I have had a problematic relationship in the past with overspending and overconsuming on fashion and beauty items in particular. Over the past few years, I have done different projects, no buys, low buys, attempts at budgeting, all in the pursuit of addressing that relationship. My previous video to this is my why I have decided to do another no buy year in 2023. That video is quite long, but it's quite in depth. It goes through my history, it reflects on what's worked and not worked about previous projects and it outlines my reasons for why I am doing this this year. If you have clicked in this video because you're also doing a no buy or a low buy or some kind of project around trying to reduce your consumption, I would really recommend checking in with your why because that is the thing that is going to drive you through all the challenges of being on a no buy. Mine is in that video and if you want to get to know me better, get to know why I'm doing this, I will link that video up in the eye. I would recommend going to check it out. But this video is just very much the outline of what is and isn't allowed in my 2023 no buy year. Now straight up, the main rule, the overarching one, the whole point of a no buy year is that I am not allowed to make any fashion or beauty purchases in 2023. Those are my problem areas, those are the areas that grow beyond my control, that spiral, that I am the most impulsive around, that I get the most grit and become completely illogical in my spending habits around. So those are the two areas that I am looking to tackle. It is a replacements only no buy, so I am allowed replacement items. Replacements have to be one in, one out. So the main replacements that I will be buying will be skincare replacements. So if I finish a cleanser and I have no other cleansers left in that category, I have no alternative product already in my inventory that would do that job, I am allowed to purchase another one. I think it kind of almost goes without saying, but let's just say it anyway. I am not allowed to just buy a replacement of something because I have liked a specific one and I want to get that one again if I do have something else that does the job. Now, at the time of posting this, I have put up my perfume and skincare and hair care inventories. I have not yet put up my makeup inventory and spoiler alert, there will not be any replacements happening in makeup. I've definitely got enough there, but you can go check out my inventory videos to see kind of where I'm sitting at. For the majority of categories, I have a lot of items. So I've actually just said cleanser there, that is a category I definitely don't need any replacements in because I have got a lot of cleansers. So I'm not allowed to finish the cleanser that I'm currently using, which I really like, and then say, well, actually I've got another 12 sitting there but I'm just going to repurchase this one that I have to use those other 12. The category has to be down to one or there has to be only one thing within that category that does that job for me to be able to replace it. In terms of my wardrobe, I am going to allow myself replacements. I don't foresee many wardrobe replacements having to be bought. Really, I think my gym wear, a lot of that's kind of getting to the end of its life. That might need replaced. My gym shoes I think will need replaced, they're getting quite soft and unsupportive, but they've definitely got life in them yet. It's not something that's going to be happening in the near future, just I think at some point this year they're heading towards that. I don't think I'm going to get the whole year out of my current sportswear selection and I will need to replace my jeans because my thighs eat my jeans. Basically, if I end up with holes in those things, I'm allowed to replace them. But again, it would be a one in, one out situation. The only exception that I'm putting in place around fashion or beauty items that are not direct replacements as such and would be additions to my wardrobe are thermals. I'm going to Alaska in September and depending on what the weather forecast is for that time, the closer we get to it, if it's going to be cold enough that I think thermal base layers would be a good thing to have for my outfits from a sort of safety and comfort point of view. I am going to allow myself to purchase some thermals, but it's not something that I have in my wardrobe that I wear daily. I have a couple of thermal tops that I wear when it's really cold in winter here, but I'm not wearing thermals every single day. So it's not something that I would be spending a lot of money on. It's not something I'd be looking to purchase, you know, designer thermals or anything. I will be doing a Marks and Spencers or Uniqlo order like that ahead of that holiday. Alongside my no buy year, I'm also going to be running a budget every single month. I'm giving myself a budget of £250 and that is going to cover 
things that I am allowed to buy but that I don't want to start going mad on. So in terms of shopping and spending, my beauty replacements need to come out of that budget. The reason for that is because I think as I move towards getting my skincare and my hair care etc under control, not having the huge inventory of product that I do still currently have, those replacements are going to become a more frequent expense for me and I want to keep an eye on how much I'm actually spending on them. Now I did track my replacements last year so in 2022 I bought 32 replacements beauty wise and I spent a total of £634.48. Now the thing with that is that I think that's quite a significant chunk of money to have spent when I know at the moment I am still not buying replacements in the majority of categories in beauty because I have so much accumulated that I'm not down to a point of needing replacements really for a lot of them yet. But as I move towards getting all of those categories under control, those replacements are going to have to go into that mix as well. So if I'm not buying for everything at the moment, but I've spent the best part of £700 in a year just replacing, and replacements are a one in, one out, that's just replacements. It's not buying new things that I... You know, it's not buying eyeshadow palettes, you know, that I'm getting a lot of fun and a lot of enjoyment out of. It's utilitarian products that I am finishing. It's generally skincare, it's generally serum. That's kind of the one category that I have under control. So it's not something I'm particularly excited about buying. So it's not something I want a huge amount of my money to be going towards. So if that's how much I spent in a year when I know I'm not replacing everything, I just want to be keeping an eye on it as that need for replacements grows as the amount that I've got stockpiled lessens. I am not taking my wardrobe replacements from my budget. The reason for that is because, as I said, I think they will be infrequent. So they're not something that I think I need to be budgeting for as a regular expense. I also would like to be buying better and buying less because I think buying better, I wouldn't need those replacements as much with clothing. The thing with beauty is if I buy say a moisturiser for example and it's say it's a 30ml moisturiser now whether I buy that 30ml moisturiser out of Boots and say I buy it from the Inky List or whatever and it's £12 or whether I buy it from Space NK and it's from Algenist and say it's £70 it's 30ml of moisturiser now of course certain things you know spread more easily less product goes further there are obviously discrepancies in 30ml of one product is not exactly equal to 30ml of another product. However, generally, it's tit for tat, more or less. Regardless of what I spend, I'm going to go through it in roughly the same amount of time. Whereas I feel with my wardrobe, if I buy, say, Marks and Spencer's gym leggings and they're, say, £30, I'm probably going to wear them out within maybe six months of using them every single week going to the gym. Whereas maybe if I invest a little bit more and buy Lululemon leggings, for example, they might actually last me a year and a bit. So overall, they've been more upfront, but I've got more time out of them. And that's what I'm a bit more interested in. Because that is a little bit more upfront, I think it would take too much out of my budget for me to be comfortable making those investments. But I think they're going to be worthwhile investments to make but because they will be infrequent I'm happy for them to just come out of my main disposable income that I would otherwise be hoping to save because I'm not buying fashion and beauty items which is what I would usually be spending that disposable income on. Beauty replacements, budget, wardrobe replacements, not budget. I think essentially the main logic that I've applied to things that I'm taking from my budget they are things that I either want to make sure that I control or they are things that I think are regular expenses that need to be more carefully regulated than one-off expenses. To continue with other categories, things that are not a problem for me that I'm allowing myself to buy this year but that must come from the budget. I'm calling it homewares. What I mean is lamps, scented candles, ornaments, things like that. I am attracted to those things. It's never become a problem category for me but I want to be taking it from my budget so that it doesn't become a problem category for me, especially in the absence of buying fashion and beauty. I don't want it to be that I stop that and move on to something else. So although it's not a problem and it's not something that I foresee becoming a problem, 
I think keeping that regulated within the budget is the way forward for me. The same also applies to stationery, to books and to digital downloads, so whether it's like audiobook downloads or film downloads, all of those things have to come from my budget in terms of physical things that I would purchase that come from my budget. Things that are like physical items that I would buy and purchase that are not a problem that I am not taking from my budget are technology. I am not into technology. This camera that I'm filming on right now I got for going on holiday in 2015. It just doesn't excite me. I'm not on the cutting edge of technology. I replace my technology when it needs to be replaced. I'm not somebody who's out there. I don't even know what's happening in the world of technology right now. I am hoping to buy a house next year. I probably won't even buy a TV. Like I am just, I'm not somebody who's super like into technology. It's not going to become a problem for me. It doesn't excite me. I would possibly like to buy a new camera before I go to Alaska. So I am leaving it out of the budget so that I can, similarly to as I was saying with the gym wear and the leggings, buy a good camera rather than trying to make it come out of my budget, settling for something that is a little bit subpar and is going to be outdated enough within a year or two that even I, as somebody who doesn't really care for technology, would need to replace it again. So technology, not an issue for me. The only thing I would foresee myself buying is a new camera before I go to Alaska. So I'm not bothering to try and regulate that within my budget. And furniture. So again, I don't think I could work buying decent furniture into the budget in terms of, because although I'm talking in this video about things that I would buy that would come from the budget, the budget's going to cover more than just physical things that I would buy. My next video after this will be outlining the budget for 2023 and everything that needs to come from that. So I don't think it would be reasonable to expect me to get a piece of furniture within that budget that will be the right piece of furniture. Really what I'm saying when I say furniture is that I want a chair for my room. I am right now making do with one of the dining chairs from downstairs. It's fine, it functions. I'm not desperate to go buy a chair. That does what I needed to do but it's not exactly the right height for sitting at the desk so it gets quite uncomfortable after a while. So I am looking to try and find a better chair but I want it to be the exact right height that I can sit at the desk, feel supported. I want it to not be too big so that it's not taking up a lot of space. So I'm not interested in rushing into buying a chair just because I don't need to take it from my budget. It's just I want to have the freedom to make the right choice of chair and buy it once and have the chair that I'm going to stick with rather than being financially constrained and buying a chair that's maybe not quite right. So at the moment I've got one to make do with and it's fine, but if I see the right one, I'm going to allow myself to buy it. But that's the only piece of furniture that I foresee myself possibly buying this year. Gifts for other people, I think, goes without saying, if it's somebody's birthday or at Christmas or whatever, I'm going to allow myself to just buy those things for people as those things arise and that's not coming from my budget because my budget's more about controlling things that are personal to me that I would overspend on for myself. So gifts for other people don't need to come from my budget. Now in terms of exceptions to my no buy, if I get gift cards, birthday money or points vouchers, I'm allowed to spend them freely. In terms of starting the year right now, I did get money at Christmas but I went to London between Christmas and New Year. I mainly spent that money in London and I also, I had a little bit that I deliberately kept back for when I went to the Florence and the Machine concert a few weeks ago and I kept some of that money back so I could buy myself some merchandise at that concert. So my Christmas money is gone so there is no money floating about for me to spend freely now and I quite like in a way that that was gone so that it wasn't and I wasn't getting into the habit and I wasn't getting obsessive about what I would spend that money on it's just out of the equation. My birthday is in July but if I do get any money for my birthday I am going to allow myself to spend it on a gift for myself that I would have received had the giver of the money given me a gift instead of the money. Does that make sense? So I'm allowed to receive gifts and if I receive money for my birthday which is the only thing I think I would really be receiving money for this year and then Christmas possibly at the end of the year I'm allowed to spend that freely. In terms of my points at the start of this year I have actually just spent, I had Space NK points but I have just spent them and um, I actually replaced my dry shampoo which I've just finished so a bit of a spoiler there for my February inventory update for you. I have purchased a dry shampoo and I used my Space NK points towards that. So in that instance what that then means is that 
the dry shampoo, I bought the Olaplex one, the RRP is £28, I had £15 worth of Space NK points, so I've only paid £13 for it. So the £13 has come off of my budget, the points have saved me money from my budget. So basically because of that, there's a sort of motivation there that if I do get vouchers or indeed money for a gift, if I was to use it for my replacement, it would stop me taking the money out of my budget. So that is probably how I want to spend what I do have. But as I said, I've spent my Space NK points, I have £25 in Harrods points, and about eight pounds worth of boots points. So that's what I'm starting the year with. That's the only thing that I've got to spend freely, but the motivation is probably there to spend it on replacements and not take that out of my budget and leave my budget more flexible for other things if possible. That's what I really foresee myself spending those things on, but I would let myself spend them freely, you know, if something that I really wanted came up because it's not for me, the drive this year, as I said in my Y video, a lot of it is financial. It's about saving money, so that is not, spending points or whatever is not impacting on me actually spending money. The last thing that I just want to cover as an exception to my no buy is regarding holidays. In my Y video, I talked about in the last couple of times that I've done this, I have made holidays a sort of free zone where I've been allowed to shop because I felt like it wasn't having the habit of shopping at home and it wasn't putting me back in the same habits and I purchased slightly differently on holiday to how I do or how I did at home. Last year that really didn't work for me. I sort of subverted the intention behind the holiday exception. So this year I am allowing myself to buy souvenirs on my Disney holidays only. I am not allowed to buy fashion or beauty purchases on holiday but I am allowed to buy something that would be a memento of the holiday only on my Disney holidays. What I'm kind of specifically thinking about here, I'm going to Disneyland Paris in March and my cruise to Alaska is a Disney Cruise Line cruise. I am going to allow myself to buy probably like a Disney pin, maybe like a notebook and um, maybe like a t-shirt because I wouldn't really count that as like a fashion t-shirt. That's not like the equivalent of me buying a dress or whatever. It's like a t-shirt that says Disneyland Paris 2023 on it or whatever. I am going to allow myself to buy souvenirs but I am not going to allow myself to go on holiday and buy things that I would buy at home basically. So it needs to be in person. It needs to be in front of me on holiday. I can't use being on holiday as an excuse to buy something online that I have wanted that I've seen at home. It needs to be related specifically to the holiday itself so it needs to be Disney merchandise essentially is what I'm saying here. Now I did think about putting a budget in place but I think what I would do is if I set a budget I think I would spend to the entirety of that budget and I think as well it would possibly bring up some quite conflicting feelings that I don't really want to be dealing with whilst I'm on holiday. I don't want to be going through thinking I've got 500 euros to spend and then becoming annoyed on holiday because I could spend that 500 euros on a plain handbag or a nice bottle of perfume and some souvenir -y thing. At the end of the day if I put the budget in place I'm spending 500 euros regardless of what I spend it on. Whereas I think if I'm saying no to the fashion and beauty items that I would maybe choose to spend that budget on if it was a free budget to be spent as it is then I will save more money because I wouldn't be thinking of it as a budget that I have got to spend that I will spend whether I really want to spend it or not on the souvenirs, on the things that I am allowed to buy. I think I'll actually buy less overall if I only buy the couple of souvenirs that I would pick. Whereas if I set a budget and it's higher and I've got that money to spend, I think I will spend it regardless of whether I really want anything over and above the things I would have initially chosen. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So that's why I'm doing souvenirs with those rules rather than a budget for the holidays and it is only going to apply to my Disney holidays. So I'm going to Dublin at the end of February, I'm going to London in May, I might end up on some other sort of mini breaks and things and I'm not going to let myself buy anything on those types of holidays. Specifically I'm thinking Disney, Disneyland Paris, it's their 30th anniversary, there's going to be 2023 slash 30th anniversary merchandise that I will only be able to buy on that trip that will be a specific commemoration of that trip and this will be my first ever Disney cruise and I'm really really keen, I've been keen for so long to do a Disney cruise so I'm really excited about that. I would like Disney cruise specific merchandise 
and to mark going to Alaska because I think that's the sort of place I probably won't go back to. Um, oh, I say this, I could see me actually being like that cruise was great, I want to do it again, but it's an expensive cruise, I don't think he'll be signing up to do it again next year after doing it this year, so I don't want to say it's a once in a lifetime holiday because I could see me doing it again in the future, but it certainly wouldn't be in the immediate future in the next few years. So this will be my one Alaska Disney cruise for probably the next 10 years at least. It's just a bit different. I, it might not make a lot of sense if you're not a Disney person, but it is just a bit of a different scenario. So I'm putting the allowance in for the Disney holidays, but I am not allowed to buy things on my other holidays and I am not allowed to buy non-Disney, non-souvenir items on the Disney holidays. And it probably goes without saying, but in terms of actually paying for the holidays themselves and paying for like the food and the spending money etc on those holidays that comes from my holiday savings account so the way that I have worked my budget out is that I have looked at my top level, my income, what I make every month in my salary I've taken off my bills, I've taken off my essential spends like my supermarket shop, my travel to work those kinds of costs that I can't just not pay as such they've all been taken off then I put an amount into my future house savings account every month, I put a house into my rainy day savings every month and I put an amount into my holiday savings every month. So what is left is my disposable income and my budget, my £250 is a percentage of that that I'm happy with spending on the things that my budget is going to cover which will be the next video in full. So the holidays in terms of them actually being paid for themselves are not coming from my budget, the spending money for them is not coming from my budget it's coming from that holiday savings account. What I am putting in place though is that holidays are two nights or more to be coming from that account. If I do day trips or overnight trips, like when I go to Dublin at the end of February, it's one night, it's an overnight that we're doing, I've taken that from my budget. So I'm paying for anything that is one night or less, that is an experience, that's coming from my budget, but the holidays themselves will not be. So I think that is everything to be covered about my no buy, about the exceptions and I've told you a little bit about my budget but that will be my next video. We will go through my budget in detail outlining exactly what it's covering, how I'm setting it up, how I'm tracking it so I will see you in that video. Thank you very much for watching this one and I hope you have, I was going to say a lovely Sunday but you might not be watching this on the Sunday that I put it live um, but just a lovely day, whatever day it is that you're watching this. Thank you for doing so and I will see you in my next video. Bye.